Daniel, we're here. Yes, I am. Powering up. Powering up? Like the, yes. uh, God, who was, what's the name of the thing from the Power Rangers? Um, the big robot. The mechs. Megazord. Meg, Megazord? What? Megazord. Megazord? Is that what? Yeah, we're Megazord all together. Okay. Yes. Combined. But we're missing our third piece. I mean, aren't there technically five Power Rangers? There now? are five. I mean, we have, okay, so it's the three of us, and then we have like two friends of the show. I don't know. That combined. Who's the Green <laughs> Ranger of the group? Oh, it's a good one. Probably Alex, because he does all the, the real work behind the scenes. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't know. It was always Wouldn't weird. that be like Alpha? No, no. I don't know, man. I've seen a lot of lots Power Rangers. I always found it weird that the Green Ranger was, you know, the best one. It was like green. Mm -hmm. It's an odd color. I remember the oh. Power Ranger show when I was a kid. There was a burgundy, like he was about thunder or whatever. Oh, yes. Ninja Storm. Was that it? I remember yeah, it. Yeah. I remember really liking it because it was a cool color, but it was just never really fit into the normal like main five color. Anyway, uh, we should talk about hockey, shouldn't we? Yes, we will. <laughs> okay. Um, to start the show, I don't know. There's a few places we could go. Um, we're still at that time of the year that I hate Daniel. The trade deadline is not Friday, as in in two days. It is next Friday, the third of March, as you know. So just over a week away from the trade deadline, how are you feeling? I think I'm feeling the same way you said. Um, a lot of speculation. We've been looking at what insiders have been saying, but nothing confirmed. Um, I think we really got lucky with the Ryan O'Reilly trade because that gave us a lot of content and something to discuss. I think right now we're back to square one where we mentioned, will he go, will he not? See, it's a double-edged sword, the fact that we got the Horvat trade, then the O'Reilly trade, mm -hmm. because then that means there's even less to talk about next week and more focus on the depth, guys. Here's what doesn't help either, Daniel. I'd like to know if you agree or disagree with me on this. So Jacob Chicker and Vladislav Gabrikov are out for trade reasons. Now Luke Shen is. So, and none of them seem to be imminent. Maybe Luke Shen. We'll get to that a little later. Maybe Gavrikov, but that depends on the Bruins doing something else. But it doesn't help that we these we have these guys sitting, and we're so used to by the time they get sat, that means they're about to be traded, but nothing's happening. Yeah, um, I was kind of surprised. Like Jake Trader, it's been what over a week now. He hasn't played. Uh, I think so. Yeah, that's uh, pretty crazy. Um, he's also been available for more than a year. Yeah, and. You know, granted, he is healthy now, so mm -hmm. I don't know what the holdup is. Also, that cap hit in this economy. It's healthy to move. Yeah. Well, that's probably why they want so much. And um, I don't know, the Kings and them just still haven't sat and got it done, which is very annoying. Uh, but mentioned earlier, Luke Shen is a news player to be sitting out. Um, again, sometimes it, you get mixed up about how much you read in that. Because earlier today, I was looking through some stuff. Emily Kaplan put out her little piece about what she's hearing lately. Friedman put out 32 Thoughts today, the blog. So uh, it was either one of them or somewhere else where I saw the fact that apparently the Canucks won a third-round pick for Luke Shen. If they don't get that, then he's probably going to stay. That's not too outrageous for, I would think, some teams out there. You know what? I'm going to check if a certain team has it very quickly. Actually, okay. Here, Daniel. To see if a certain team has a third round pick. Because I yeah, think I, they were reported to maybe not be in anymore on this player, but I, I have to check. Yeah, again, that's not bad at all for Luke Shen. Um, I think he's really rebuilt his value and aged gracefully into his three thirty-two. He's thirty-two years old right now. And if the Canucks can get that, why not? But I think he's also a locker room guy that you don't get the right price for him, you keep him and see where things go um this looks like a situation to me that he really does love vancouver i think after what happened with tampa and how he kind of showed he was still a reliable guy on a cup winning team um no matter what jeff Follette says i know jeff Follette mentioned he only played nine i think 18 or 19 of 28 playoff games in the back-to-back -back cup you runs uh, yeah yes yeah, yeah okay um did he point point that out yeah, I point that out that uh, because I think someone did tweet out that Luke Shen and I know I mentioned it just to just to joke with Alex, like the homecoming of him coming back to Toronto. But it does make sense that there really isn't any space for him here in Toronto. But 
I'll just see where it goes. I, he does look like someone that he'll get traded, go for a run, and then you know if it goes well, maybe if it doesn't go well, he'll come back to Vancouver and just be that character guy again. So he is uh, 33. No, 33, okay. Now, the Leafs' third-round pick is mixed in right now with the condition for the Coyotes. I'm assuming that's an Ingrichie trade. Um, but the Tampa Bay Lightning do have their third-round pick this year. Bring Why him back. Check that. Yeah, bring back Luke Shun. Why not? Why not? Awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I could feel like a lot of teams could could afford that. I'm not going to go through every single one because I don't think people really want to listen to me do that for another hour. But um, interesting stuff nonetheless. Uh, we can take one name off the trade list, and I have taken him off the two and one podcast big board. I can't do. I don't have the energy to do the whole name, Daniel. I won't lie to you. Mm-hmm. Um, Jonathan Taves. It seems to be suffering long term from COVID issues. We know he had it before, missed significant time. Uh, he won't be traded. Um, sorry if I just repeated myself here, Daniel. Um, Jonathan Taves. I meant to say Patrick Kane. There, I'm a mess. I'm so sorry. Um, That's okay. Patrick Kane is still up in the air. We'll talk about him in a second here. Your immediate reaction to Jonathan Tapes not being traded in, you know, as his future as a player, we don't know. Yeah, I think it kind of was confirmed when that he was out for that season, not knowing what was going on. We had speculation about long COVID, about how he was suffering from that. And, you know, we got we got the confirmation now. And all I can really say is I wish him the best. I know that we were gauging value of where he's at in his career, whether or not there's going to be a Winnipeg Jets uh, offer there. You know, he goes back to Manitoba, but um, nah, I don't know. Just want to just really wish him the best. It's just an odd season for Chicago in a way. And it's just that guy, you know, Jonathan Taves, that just like that last piece of what was Blackhawks before and seeing what they are now, I think, Things do get accelerated a lot more now. Now that he may not play, he may not come back next year. Well, um, we can't say Jonathan Taves without mentioning Patrick Kane. So um, right after, a couple of days after, you know the uh, the Blackhawks get their you know chest caved in by the Leafs uh, in the most lopsided game apparently in like betting history or something. Um, the O'Reilly trade happens. We covered that. Um, since then, though, the Hawks did play the Leafs yet again, and Patrick Kane put the team on his back, scored a hatcher against the Leafs. Afterwards, uh, made a point to say that him going to Toronto wasn't something that was going to happen, denying the reports. Um, that was for a not, year. I, Remember that? I, that was there for over like a year. You kept hearing that. Yeah. yeah. Did you know that him and Austin Matthews want to play together? Oh, I didn't know that. Especially when that week leading up to the O'Reilly trade, I feel like Toronto media was really, really. I could, I can tell you how many times I saw on Twitter or YouTube thumbnails from sports and TSN saying, "Should Patrick Kane be elite?" That was an alarm. See, I mean, that was Alex's. I hear it all the way, even though he's working right now. That was mm-hmm. his alarm, not mine. Um, okay, <laughs> all um, the way from U of T right now. Uh, yeah, come on now. Um, I hope he's not standing on a box to look as tall as the guy next to him in the broadcast booth. Uh, I know he's not doing broadcasts. So, um, <laughs> I had to, I had to get that dig in there. Um, where was I? Patrick Kane. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny that I mentioned that. Um, but this was stuff coming out, and uh, Friedman said this, and Emily Kaplan have said this. The team's apparently right now interested in Patrick Kane. The Carolina Hurricanes. Mm-hmm. Interesting. The Dallas Stars, even though apparently that may have been shot down by Taves. I saw somewhere. Uh, Vegas, who just put Mark Stone on LTIR. And the Oilers. Now, two notes I want to mention here, Daniel. Obviously, Vegas earlier today moved the Shea Weber contract for Dyson Mayo. That clears up um, a lot of cap stuff for the future. A lot of stuff was being made. Cap Friendly on Twitter had a really good breakdown of it for anyone who wants to go see it. And that's the tying also to Carolina. Tom Dunham was actually on Daily Faceoff uh, talking to Frank Cervelli, saying that right now the Hurricanes are leaning more on the aggressive side than ever. We know about Timo Meyer, but maybe if they don't want to pay that big of a price, Patrick Kane is a rental, maybe. Yeah, we never really, <clears throat> we never really seen a Carolina trade that, like for me, they're a team that has always been so strategic mm-hmm. with the moves they make that I've never really seen them do this type of quote unquote rental going all in type of move. And we mentioned before, we mentioned it before the playoffs last year that when is it going to be the year that we see this core that. It's more or less one of the most complete teams in the league. Finally make that long run. So 
I can see it. Like, can they finally beat Boston? Like, that's one thing too. Um, you can say that about so many teams in the yeah. Eastern Conference <laughs> too. Um, they are just the Bruins are such demons to everyone, and it's the funniest thing ever. Um, listen, I think Kane. For some reason, I, my head's really telling me Vegas now. Um, just because it just feels funny. It just feels so on brand for Vegas to go out and get them. Yeah. Um, and then like a I, hired gun. You know what I mean? It's yeah, exactly. It's just that feel. It's like the mercenary feel, but to the way Vegas is like, you know, Mark Stone's gone. Now let's get Patrick Kane. But I think maybe just my thing, but his personality fits Vegas a lot more in a way. Like, and strangely, Phil Kessel has as well, because it's just Phil Kessel. And then why not go to Vegas? Um, I'm thinking of jokes to make about Patrick Kane, but I'm not going to. Um, when it comes to Vegas and being a party city, I won't do it. Um, but um, I thought for a second when you talk about personality, for some reason I thought you were about to talk about Shea Weber <laughs> because I was looking at his name on the notes. I'm like, uh, yeah, no, he he's very quiet. We could talk about him if you want. We didn't get no, to I, say the trade, the full I, trade. I don't, I don't not. I didn't write it down because I didn't think it mattered. Okay. I, what is it like a third or a fourth? In it's there? a fifth, and Shea, yeah, for Dyson Mayo. I like getting Dyson Mayo as a depth guy. But the, the crazy thing now is the Coyotes, and I just saw this on Daily Faceoff, it, oh no, Cap Friendly is, they have over $26 million on the IR for retained yeah. salary. What is it, around 25% of their cap hits made of LTI? That's a, you can't keep letting that happen. Yeah. That's such a joke. They're not spending any real money, because what is it, Weber's signing bonus, he's only going to be paid like a million dollars for every year left in the deal. Mm-hmm. It was funny seeing everyone mention, hey, for Coyotes legends retiring without ever playing a game, Shea Weber, uh, Chris Pronger, Pavel Dotsu. Do you know technically um, Chickering came from that move? Yeah, he did. That was the one for uh, that Philip Ronick. Yeah. And I think Joe Vitale went to Detroit. So we both, and the we both pick saw be- that tweet earlier today then. Yeah, and it was like Dennis, Dennis Cholosky was the pick swap, That's the first it. round pick swaps. That's going to be a very interesting trade tree to look at in a couple of years. Yeah. I, this is a random thing, but I just remembered it. But Dallas has, and Detroit actually have made a lot of like moves that have really shaped the franchises in a way that kind of led to other trades. Like whenever Detroit ch- acquires or trades like a pick that's in the second round, it like affects them dramatically. Like they trade Chicker in, but they got Ronick back, right? Uh-huh. That was a second round. That was with a second round pick. But they also traded like the pick they became Rupe Hints to Dallas. Oh, really? Yeah, and that changes things. So it's just weird with Detroit when it comes to second round picks. Like, you know, they never have any luck. Well, they do have um, they. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, everyone right now is probably thinking, "Hey, remember Pavel Datsug and that in like the, the fifth and sixth? Yeah. That's when no one feels bad for Detroit. Um, Wait, Marion yeah. Hosa is also Coyote, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's another one. I was still never going to get over how all of a sudden he became allergic to his equipment, and it, mm-hmm. no one ever blinked at it. Like that was that's that's a move in NHL history that's always really bothered me. Um, but you know the Blackhawks. No, and I'm thinking of another thing to say. I'm not going to say it though. I'm not going to say it. Um, another one of those teams interested in Patrick Kane, and I'm starting to wonder what this team's actually going to do with the deadline. And I'm starting to wonder, and I'm concerned they're not going to do anything. And that's the Edmonton Oilers. Feels like it was always like, are they getting Chikrin? No, they're not getting Jacob Chikrin. Everyone talked about Eric Carlson. Well, let's be honest, that's probably not going to happen. Friedman sort of went upon that on the blog today. Like, what actually are the Oilers going to do? Because they have to do something. I think right now we can't look at the highs of it, that they're three points off from winning the division, well, from leading the division right now uh yeah they've caught up they've caught up yeah i knew they were like right outside the wild card but they had a bunch of games in hand there is the pacific that weird it's it's, it's weird so I it's I, a, it's, they're on that high swing right now that we see but i don't think that it's gonna last so uh, yeah i could really expect them to do something but it just I've, i'm thinking of the money and like how you're gonna let that make that work man the pacific is 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 so so bad yeah <laughs> it's actually hilarious um man so it's funny we like at it here hopefully the the nashville just kind of hopefully just decide that they're done 
And then it's basically if Calgary can get there. I mean, Calgary is not looking. They have to win tonight. Calgary lose tonight to the Coyotes. That's going to be – is there already f- – no, that's not five points. It is five points. No, it's four points. They're four points – wait. Yeah, four points back of the wild. They're even when it comes to games played. Big win last night for Minnesota. And uh, Ryan Hartman getting them past LA. That's a big win for Minnesota. Calgary need to – they're running out of runway here. Um, yeah. Sorry, I completely went off of Edmonton because everything's dollar in, dollar out for them. So it's – is it really just going to be they're going to move Paul Yarvey and that's it? Because if you don't bring back an asset the other way, then – like McDavid just hit 800 points. Yeah. How stupid is it to think he's already done that? Work on that. You I mean, may not get him any help. And it's great. Like, you know, we – I can mention the bigger achievement here. It just when you look at the names he's around right now of when they played and he finally reached 800 points in those many games. So what no, was it's it? insane. Fifth I didn't think I'd fastest. see that in our lifetime. So it's it's fifth fastest. So who's ahead of him? Wayne, Mario, um, Stastny? M- Peter Stastny, sorry. Peter Pat Stastny and then Mike Bossy. And then Mike Bossy. That's stupid. Those are like mythical names. Yeah. It just it's so stupid to say out loud he's hit 800 points and he, it feels like he's been in the league for 10 minutes sometimes. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. He's already, what, 25, 26? I, I'd say. And then Leon hit 700 points. Yeah, it was like fifth quickest among active state skaters. He's done that. Man, imagine, imagine that they're, they're pulling the team <laughs> ahead. It's so sad. So who do they play in the playoffs if it started today? They would play Dallas. Well, because yeah, I, Vegas have one point more, so they'd be playing Dallas. I yeah, I'm taking Dallas. I'm taking Dallas. Yeah, like oh, it's it's. I wouldn't be surprised if Edmonton came out, but it's like the Stars are something else this year too. They've really built on, and we'll get back to the Oilers, but the the Dallas Stars have really built on what they showed last year. I think. Um, I was kind of iffy about the Niels Lundqvist trade, but you know it's as advertised for me. Like how good their draft picks have been. You know who's only a point behind them too? That's Winnipeg. No, the they Jets did do like, something like two teams that you know went off with new coaches and it's done wonders. By the way, shout out to the Abs being like right there too, despite like every injury in the world happening there. Yes, wishing Kale McCarr the best. I know he's still on. That's yeah, that's that's rough. Still contract. trying to get back in the lineup. That's so tough. Uh, if you guys want Sean Monahan, go get him. I could, you know, back to the Battle of Alberta. That'd be crazy. Yeah, I mean, what? What? No, I mean, to Colorado. Oh my bad. I thought you meant Sean oh, Monahan as like that. You know, cheap depth guy to, or I'm like Puyarvi and a third for Sean Monahan. I'd do that. Yeah, I mean that's pretty fair. I'd do that in a heartbeat. Like, I mean, like if like Monahan played the, the full year and was good, then I wouldn't. But the way he is now, I'd, I'd do that. Yeah, do that in a, in a heartbeat. You see, apparently that um, obviously Minnesota got the pick for helping retain the O'Reilly deal. Apparently Montreal were trying to do that because of all the injury stuff going on in their cap. They couldn't do it. Which is very it's annoying. Okay. Very. You have to follow where that fourth goes. And the fork is leading like seventh overall right now. I gotta get it. Man, Juan well, Michkov and all that. If they somehow swipe like Leo Carlson, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. That'd be good. What about Will Smith? No. No, I want Leo Carlson. Leo Carlson's okay. worst case scenario for me. And that's a it's a good player, but you know, it's, okay. it's a lot more. Uh apparently Jeff Petrie's Available via trade. The Penguins have made him available. Um, Dan, I can't say this name properly. Dan Kingzerski was talking about it. And uh, it was also going around. Marco Damico made something on, uh, was writing something about the Habs and looking back on the Matheson trade. Oh, I love it. Apparently he's been playing well, but it just makes me kind of like, kind of laugh. Do you see the stats of like, um, let me see if I can find this, about the Penguins' third line. Because, man, um, one thing we have not talked about enough is Jeff Carter has not been good. That was a bad... I already knew it. That was <clears throat> that was a very typical Brian Burke. You know, excellent deadline pickup for him a couple years ago, but that was... I already knew that was... That was a very, very Brian Burke. He's my type of guy extension yep. that you should have given to Jeff Carter, who was 36 at the time. 
So uh, Grav on Twitter put this out. The Pittsburgh Penguins third line combined since January 1st, and this is a uh, this is Brock McGinn, Jeff Carter, and Kasperi Kapanen. In 55 games played, they have collectively four goals, four points. Sorry, four goals, four assists for eight points, six even straight points, a minus 16, and 27 penalty minutes. Uh, by the way, uh, as he puts here, just for reference, the Rangers' third line, the kid line, or the boys become men line, as Mike calls it, have produced 43 points over that same stretch. My goodness. Oh, my God. Like, I don't count out Sidney Crosby, but I kind of count out the rest of the team. I count out their depth. I count out the fact that they went out and traded for these guys or signed them, and that's what you have. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. Uh, where else can we talk about here? I forget who had this. Did you see the thing? Apparently, the Oilers may be interested in Pareko. I can't remember who the life of me had this out there. I Maybe didn't Chris see Johnson. that. Maybe. But it, okay, then you know what? Just in case, we'll we'll, we'll not talk about that. I don't okay. Want I was hoping asterisk for next episode. Yeah, I was hoping one of you had also seen it, but like I just I've I only remember the seen, reporter. I've only seen like his name in, you know. The Blues are going to do a fire, keep doing their fire sale. So, well, here's the thing: they may not do that anymore, Daniel, because and this was on insider trading. Apparently, the St. Louis Blues have emerged as a potential landing spot for Timo Meyer. Now, okay, uh, here LeBron said on insider trading, uh, they're willing to give up two first round picks in a Timo Meyer package. Now, New Jersey and Carolina are. Uh, excuse me, do you remain the front runners for the deal? However, um, listen, yes, the blue line needs work. We talked about that last episode. Um, Timo Meyer can jumpstart your rebuild, or because you know, it's been said that maybe they don't want to do a long term one at the same time, though. That's like the worst, most boring outcome for this trade deadline. I like, kind of hope yeah. it doesn't happen. I just kind of feel like if you say jump starts, like, I guess. You know, accelerate a rebuild or a retool on the fly. It, I don't know. Like, I, I don't see him as like a focal point guy, but I could kind of see the allure of getting him. And I, I look at what other teams are looking at in terms of a trade package. And I don't know if, what would St. Louis's look like, like Jake Neighbors and a first or those two firsts or, you know, a Scott Peronovich. I don't know. Because I think like, to have Alexander Holtz there and not really utilizing him and trading him in a package that wouldn't even hurt the Devils because they're just so deep. I know he's hurt though. I don't know how hurt he is, but I think he got hurt the other day. Mm-hmm. That may complicate things. Well, no, the, the Devils are. I mean, the way their decor looks like right now, and apparently, definitely not going to get rid of Nemec. I think anyone else is sort of obviously beside a guy like he's mm-hmm. he's there in a pretty good position. So, yeah, they I don't trade think um, Shakur Mamadoulin. Man, that guy feels like he's been around forever. Just because I think you he played for the World Juniors at one point, did he not? He did, yeah. I remember when when Russia was allowed to. See, okay. <laughs> I I that's one name that you always remember because it's just anytime Gordon Miller said it, you like, I'm sorry. How many times did you have to practice that one in front of a mirror? Um no wonder that. Wonder that. Uh Chris Johnson, crypto bro. I forget. Uh, also yes. mentioned that apparently Dmitry Orlov's name has started to go out in trade talks right now. Apparently negotiations with the Caps haven't gone anywhere. Um, they haven't given up on it, but it is something to keep an eye on. I think it's something we talked about like two years ago where it's like he might by, he might be on his way out of Washington and then <laughs> he's still there. The, the, the same thing with Kuznetsov. Yeah. Like, is he going? No, he's back. Um, man, they need D. <laughs> That's the thing. Orlov's a pretty underrated defenseman when you look at his underlying numbers, apparently. Um, I see a lot of those those sort of hockey opinions out there of, about this guy a lot. Um, man, if you have the chance to get him, though, I mean, yeah, he's about being solid. another D. I mean, Dmitry Orlov is a pretty good name. I'm not saying... You know, the Leafs are, are the team they're going to get, it, even if he has moved. But I'm just saying, like, if you need an upgrade on D and you need a, if you're willing to pay the price for a rental, if he's out there, man, go get Dimitri Orlov. It's a good player. The hey, Oilers, no? Maybe that'd be in their price range um, than a Chikorin or a Carlson. Like five million? Let me check. Um, no, I already have their cap. Oh, you have it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dimitri Orlov. 
That's the four words, Adam. God damn it. Is 5.1 million. So you retain half, 2.5, and the pull you Harvey one for one. They could do it. Yeah. Or I believe Orlov is a lefty, right? I'm pretty sure he's he a left hand. He's a left hand shot, yeah. So maybe the Boston Bruins? Maybe. Because they want a lefty? If Yeah, if they don't get Gavrikov, I'd get Orlov. Man, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's funny you say that. That's a nice transition there, Daniel. Love to see it. Uh, this was written in 32 Thoughts about Boston and, and Gavrikov. Uh, obviously, Elliot Freeman, we love him. Boston Bruins, it's been a week since Columbus pulled Vladislav Gavrikov, so that's probably a week and a half since Chicken Room was pulled, Daniel, to answer your question earlier, because mm-hmm. Gavrikov was right after. Uh, Columbus pulled Gavrikov from the lineup. Uh, everything points to Massachusetts. I forgot I can't pronounce Massachusetts. Boston as the landing spot. Boston, yes. And we're not talking about uh, playing offensive tackle for the Patriots. It's believed the Bruins. Why did he have to write that? Um, he was having fun. Yeah, he, he, he has to know I can't pronounce that state. Is it the state or is it like the air? I don't know. No, no it's the state. It's the state, yeah. It's believed the Bruins need um, a, need to make another move to make everything work. He puts Mike Riley and Craig Smith in brackets. UFA this summer, Craig Smith, love to see it. Um, and to this point, the Blue Jackets remain patient. The biggest question you hear is, um, what else do they do with anything? Boston's got special chemistry. Um, and then it goes on to uh, mess of chemistry and whatnot. Um, and they've been linked to guys like Shen and Barbashev. Um, yeah. How long if you're Columbus, if they're the only team willing to make that move and pay that price, I guess you would be patient. But if you're yeah. Columbus, eh, the deadline's almost there. Yeah, and the Bruins have a lot of players that they could give away. Like I, I could see a Fabian Lysol for a Gavrikov type of trade, especially if you could re-sign Gavrikov to a longer contract. Um, he doesn't want to, does he? He doesn't want to do it. Yeah. But then if you're the Bruins, you're probably like, oh, we can do it. Yeah, we can do it. Here, you want a second? So Take it. What, is, what is it? The, the asking price was like a first, a third, and a fourth? Yeah. The Bruins have their first, a third, and a fourth. They don't have yeah, seconds yeah. this year in X, but they have their firsts and their thirds and their fourths and the fifth, sixth, and they got two sevenths this year. You know, I think they'll be fine with the like the assets. I think it is again. We always talk about you know this is a win now type of team, they and don't, they don't care. The fact that David Krejci came back for them, it's yeah. it's a bit of a special year for them. I mean, this could be it. Yeah, this could be it. I mean, we say that every year about Boston, but. And then Bergeron wins another Selkie or something. I don't know. But uh, man, if he, I wouldn't be surprised if he does it too. Uh, he, he he will. Uh, also, some other stuff on insider trading. Pierre LeBrun was saying that um, no white flags yet for Nashville, but they are apparently taking calls on Matthias Ekholm. And Detroit appear not to be selling anyone and going for a playoff push instead. Now, if they lose a few games, who knows? But that takes, I think, Wallman off the market, Bertuzzi off the market. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but I kind of see at home being traded midseason is sort of difficult to do. Yeah. But that's a high priced guy. Someone that Boston I don't think, yeah, we, we talked about like the character guys, the guys that the kind of define the culture of the team. And he's not he's not a Roman Yossi or UC Soros, I think. Um, but he's still definitely a big part of the success of like a stretch we've had with Nashville. So It'll be interesting. To you see. know what's really funny about uh, Matthias Ekholm? What is that? So I was just looking at this because I was curious. I knew his contract was around the $6 million range. So he makes $6.2 million. There's four years left, three after this. Um, he's 32. I didn't realize he was that old. Yeah, I, I don't want to take that contract. Um, but here's what's really funny. He's a year younger than Ryan McDonough makes half a million dollars less, and they both have the same amount of term left, but McDonough has trade protection. Um, I just found that really, really funny that you've yeah. got two of sort of the same players. and um, They thought they were going to go for it or at least continue the success of things, and it hasn't worked. It hasn't. They're, like, they're kind of like San Jose, but not as bad. They've got maybe two guys that can score some good defensemen, but they actually have a goalie, but it's sort of like yeah. there's a lot of deals in there where you're like, I don't know if you're going to do Don't anything. like the deals, but they never did like a, you know, like, I mean, yeah, they did get Eric Carlson and he's, he has come back. You were right this year, but they never did that type of trade that 
It's like, oh, look at the package we sent the other way. What's the most exciting trade that franchise has ever done? They've just been one for ones. Weber Subin, um, Johansson Jones. Yeah, you're kind of right. Um, sort of trading same level players to be on. Well, I think Jones. Well, no, Jones is sort of. Um, but yeah, it's never been that sort of. Let's go load up. They used to be a good team with development. I remember that. It was just the yeah they were the defenseman factory. That um and finished goaltenders. Yeah, so I think they had that going for them. Um, I always remember, and I know it didn't burn them in the end, but I remember when they traded a first round pick for <coughs> Paul Gostad. Who? He was like throughout his entire career, he was like a third line center, and like he was, you know, he had put up solid points. Like he could, he would be good for 20, 30 points. But as a guy that had like a hundred penalty minutes a year, and they traded a first round pick for him <laughs> for some reason. That's kind of like the, um, oh God, that's like the Goudreau deal, like the Barclay one, except yeah. it didn't work out. <laughs> that's very unfortunate. I mean, um, yeah, it's true. Who did San Jose? The, oh, yeah, Ozzy Westblad. Sorry? That was the first round pick they traded away. What was that? What? It was Ozzy Westblad for Barclay Goudreau. Is that the guy who was uh who uh, was his mother death or he's death and they announced it via sign language? Am I yeah, kidding? yeah, that's the one. That was cool. That was that's yeah, that was cool. Very cool. Do we know what the actual asking price for Timo Meyer is? Has that ever been specified? I always thought of two firsts, then a solid prospect, and then I don't know the third in and there, the second body, maybe. Yeah. Do you remember when Dougie Hamilton was the UFA and? It felt like no one in Canada talked about it because it wasn't Tavares coming to the Leafs. Yeah. I feel like this year we're getting the everyone's talking about Patrick Kane and all this, but we don't exactly know what's going on. Like it feels like sometimes Timo Myers an afterthought, even though he's the best player available. Yeah. I just I don't know. That's it's just I'm getting vibes of Dougie Hamilton UFA. I could see that too, that it's just he's linked to like these certain teams, but it's just, I don't know, he's just not the exciting name for a lot of people. Because he, I think he's an excellent player. Like, he plays that scoring power forward style that any playoff team would want. It's just, I don't know, is it just playing in San Jose, like, these ca- last couple of years that uh, have yeah. kind of done that to him? Everyone, I think the only person in Southern Ontario that went on about how good Timo Meyer is uh, has been Jeff Merrick. Mm-hmm. Just him, um, especially when like Myers had a, an amazing year, like low key. I think he's already at thirty goals. He's probably gonna hit forty. You know what I mean? It's and you have him in fantasy. I think in a way too. Just I know like a one. This is not recent, but I remember when people talked about because he took a bit of a time to get to the player that San Jose saw him, in him when he went ninth. Because the next pick was Miko Rantanen. Two power boys. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes the big guys just take a little longer. You know what I mean? They just take a little longer. Maybe just... that's why. But I don't know. Okay, my prediction is he goes to New Jersey. Yeah, it's just, you know. It uh, works. I, not only is that sort of, I think, what everyone wants to happen. Um, I feel like it's for the sake of the competitiveness when we go to the playoffs. I feel like that's the move that kind of needs to happen because the Rangers are obviously supermen right now. Um, yeah. Especially with Tarasenko and that, bringing back Tyler Motten, you know. Even though shishirkin has been a little bad lately, that will stop. The yeah. Hurricanes are the Hurricanes. So if if the re- if the um and the, like the Devils, if you look at the profile, the type of player they need, they need that big body scoring touch player like Timo Meyer. I don't. Yeah. I think the only chance they have of getting past the Carolina or the Rangers rests with getting him. Um. So, you know, I, I like that. And it's nice to, I want to see the Devils back with, well, not, not to mention, you know, I love me Jack Hughes and I kind of yeah. want so. Jack Hughes and Timo Meyer, that's pretty hot. It's pretty hot. Pretty good. <laughs> um, Daniel, that's everything. Well, that was a quick episode. I mean, yeah. it is it is one of those lull episodes where we just like, well, let's speculate, but yeah, let's not yeah. confirm. That's what I hate. So it was a solid Solid effort with what we were able to do. We went through a lot of guys. I liked about this episode. We gave the role players their time. I mean, it's like an athletic article about, I don't know. 
You gotta love it. It's like Dimitri Orlov's. I don't know. Or it's like, I don't know. <laughs> Luke Shen's back. Like, that's why I always love about the athletic. Is like, they talked about the background information I wanted, not only his playing, but where he's from. Oh, they're great. The, um, the Hab staff were just doing, I think I talked about last episode, the thing with Suzuki, mm-hmm. and, um, the story behind that trade and everything. Um, oh, it's great work. I love it. Um, this is like the Habs guys. I, I love their work. I love it. Um, you know, just gotta. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, my throat hurts. That's okay. I want to go to bed. Um, All right. Thank so, you for listening to the yeah. Two and One podcast. We got to think of a name now. Yes. Hopefully, Alex is back by Sunday. If not, you'll see and listen to Adam and I again. In yeah. the meantime, check us out on all social media platforms. Yeah, and I mean, Alex will post them in the description. Yes. Yeah, so. Right now, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, of course, YouTube. Should we just put Spotify, some, we Apple like Podcasts? Make a, make a promise to the listeners and do like a, a sound effect to make Alex do extra work. Like, okay. Alex, I want to hear a dolphin. Okay. And it's we'll actually, <laughs> it, it sounds like a dolphin noise to you guys, but it's actually saying subscribe. Mm-hmm. If you don't hear it, then, you know, Alex is making me sound very silly right now. That's okay. Wow. Okay. Until next time, Adam. Yeah, until next time.